I'll be sharing aspects of my testimony this morning that I've not shared before. Uh, since the book first came out, a uh, matter of fact, I might start by uh, going to the slides. Believe it or not, that's me. And since the book first came out in 1985 or 86, it's been translated in 10 languages. Of course, a lot has happened. That's 19, 20 years ago while it was still in the writing process. And uh, there is always a risk when someone is sharing their personal testimony that uh, you could make an individual appear bigger than life. And I'm praying that Christ will be held forth uh, through this. I share some of the, the various things that I've been through because I've made a lot of mistakes, hoping that you'll know in spite of those things, God can still reach us and use us. But uh, I also want to be very real uh, and not make things bigger than life. Everybody wants happiness. I think that's one thing that we all share in common. But the places and the way that people look for happiness varies greatly. You know, you've heard me mention earlier in the program that I'm tickled. Uh, when I check out of the newsstand to look at the uh, supermarket tabloids. And sometimes I've just laughed out loud as standing in line. Now, I know that you, you don't read them, but how many of you will admit you read the headlines when you're checking out? But you know one reason that these are some of the most popular magazines in North America? Is because they are principally dealing with the lives of the rich and the famous. And somehow people believe that if they could experience these lives vicariously. They, they believe the illusion that happiness comes from fame and fortune. That's why many of these TV programs that deal with the, the rich and the famous are so popular. And people want to marry a millionaire. Who wants to be a millionaire? If I could be more popular, more beautiful, I'd be more famous. And it's really a fantasy. It's an illusion. I was raised with an unusual perspective because of the family God placed me in. Uh, my parents were very unusual and driven people. Uh, two more opposite people, I don't think, ever got married. You've heard the expression, opposites attract? Never is that more true than with my parents. My mother was Jewish by birth. My father was a Baptist. My mother was born in New York City, was very sophisticated in that way. My father was an Okie, born in Oklahoma, came during the Dust Bowl to California. She was a Democrat, the head of the women's lib movement in New York City. My father was a redneck Republican. I mean, they were just so completely opposite that it, those that knew them just marveled that the marriage lasted six years. Uh, my mother was <laughs> in show business and my father was in the aviation business. I'll start more specifically with dad. Uh, a very unusual man. His father died when he was seven years old, left his mother pregnant with three other younger brothers. My father was the oldest, and he learned as a young boy to work very hard during the Depression and uh, was very, very poor. Um, they used to save string. I mean, just to give you an idea of how things were growing up. During World War II, Dad did manage to get some education and got himself uh, flight instruction. He entered World War II as a, a pilot, a flight instructor, and finally went overseas, was there during D-Day, and uh, has uh, you know, a number of interesting stories he could tell. After the war, he wanted to continue working with aircraft. He began to buy and to sell airplanes. When I lived with Dad growing up, he had the mansion, Miami Beach. I was born in Burbank, California, but... Um, uh, Dad moved his business to Miami Beach and uh, then for years had a mansion on an island, one of the Sunset Islands in Miami Beach, and uh, all the toys, a Learjet, this is one of my dad's Learjets, he's had several over the years. At one time he didn't know which one to buy, so he bought three and tried them out, and then sold the other two at a profit, and uh, raced cars and had the Rolls Royce and, and uh, all of the toys that millionaires are supposed to have. With the butler and the maid and those things. Now, my life was, would go through v very dramatic changes. When I was living with mom in New York City, where she moved, it was so different from when I was living with dad in Miami Beach. And then they'd send us to live with grandma and grandpa, who were very poor most of their lives in California. And my brother and I went through some very radical shifts as we went from place to place. Um, mom and dad both married several times, and we got sent off a lot. Every member of my family, my brother, my mother, my father, my grandparents, has all been in national headlines at some time or another. I don't have time to tell you all about it, but I have an unusual family. Happiness doesn't come 
from things in this life. My memories of dad, 90% of the time, I'd see him briefly in the morning on his way to work, and he'd always come home intoxicated, and he'd drink himself to sleep every night. Um, what profit is it if you've got all that money and you're miserable? On the other side of the equation, mom and dad are very different. Uh, I was born in California, but when they divorced, they both took off different directions. Mom moved to New York City. She was involved in show business. My mother was a very talented, and if you don't mind my saying, so a very beautiful woman. And I guess I took after dad. <laughs> and uh, she was pretty much self-taught, a high school dropout, but she learned to play the piano, the guitar, was a lyricist, started writing songs for Elvis Presley. And uh, some of you remember that name. Any of you remember Andy Williams, Frank Sinatra, and anyone, uh, Frankie Avalon? And uh, she was writing songs for some of those people back then. She was an actress in mostly small parts in big movies. Any of you ever see the Ten Commandments? I think she was a slave. <laughs> Greasing the stone. And whenever we watch it with the kids, we say, there's Grandma! And then she's gone. <laughs> But uh, So she was an actress, but never very successful in that field. Her real success came as a film critic. She was a successful songwriter, a playwright, and a film critic. Uh, she replaced uh, Rona Barrett on Good Morning America, and she was the president and founder of the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. Uh, you recognize, of course, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, and uh, do you still remember George Burns? Um, this is mom. Um, these are all black and white, just because she had a mural where they were all done in black and white. It's the only way I got them. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. I got one color picture here, and I remember this. Ma, I was there when this picture was taken. It's Mom and the Three Stooges. Now, that is the original Mo and Larry. They had replaced Curly, had passed away, but I got to meet them. And um, they're all 70 years old at that time and still very funny. And so, Mom was famous. She knew a lot of these people, and growing up, my brother and I knew a lot of these people. Falcon was my older brother. My father named us both after airplanes, and uh, I was named Douglas after the DC craft, which isn't so bad. I could find my name on a keychain, but my, brother, my poor brother, my father named him Falcon after, I don't know, who knows what, Falcon Fanjet or something like that, and he grew up with the name Falcon Bachelor, and he got teased a lot in school because he was already small from cystic fibrosis, and he had flaming red hair. Uh, we, we didn't look at all like each other, but same mom and dad. Brown eyes, freckles, I've got blue eyes, no freckles, no hair. <laughs> well, we grew up in New York City and uh, lived on 51st Street on the east side, 81st Street on the west side. I've only completed formally the ninth grade, but I went to 14 different schools. And several of them were boarding schools. My parents would send me off frequently uh, to boarding school. Sometimes they'd send us off to summer camp because my mother was so driven to be famous and my father was so driven to make money that uh, my brother and I just seemed to get in the way. I went to Catholic school. I went to military school. First military school I went to was Black Fox Military Academy. And I understand Donald Trump went there too. And um, I was five years old. You can tell folks wanted to get us out of the house. And again, I went to New York Military Academy when uh, I was 11 years old till 13, and I went to Jewish schools. I went to two different Catholic schools, a number of uh, public schools. Uh, matter of fact, and this is another picture of me in New York Military Academy, and you know one thing I remember is that I was probably happier there at New York Military Academy than I was at several other schools, and you know why? I think it's because I, it was the first time I'd really had structure and discipline in my life. And I learned something that you cannot be happy without self-control and discipline. Now, for those of you who are parents and some kids who might be listening, I went to another school when I was, I got into trouble and I was in and out of jail. I went to another school when I was 14 years old, 15 years old, called Pine Hinge. It was an experimental school in Maine.